Lights, camera, action. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Bay Area Youth on Air, a.k.a. Bayo. Bayo. And I am your host, Amanda Jack, and this is my guest host, Damien Williams. This is our third show, and we are so excited because we have another special guest from Baycat who has submitted their amazing videos to our show. You too can submit your videos, whatever you're in, San Francisco, Oakland, whatever. And please make sure to follow us on Facebook at Bay Area Youth On Air and on Instagram, Bay, Bay Let's Talk Talent. We are so excited that our new website is now up and running. Bay please visit bayolesstalktalent.wix.com slash bayo so that you can find out more about us. See our video archive and submit videos to be featured on our show. Okay, everyone. It is now, to sh it is now time to show you all the great video submissions we have gotten from the schools and programs all over the Bay Area. The first video we're going to play is called The Art of Bicycling by Arshad Muhammad and Chris McNally. The reason why we chose this video is because the video shows a bicyclist and artist, Chris McNally, talking about his passion for art and how he got his inspiration by running all over San Francisco. This will also give future artists inspiration. Let's check it out. My name is Chris McNally. In my spare time, I mostly ride bikes. I ride bikes and draw. I like to do drawing because it's just, it's always been a relaxing and almost meditative thing for me. I go out into the world and just sit and look at things, kind of almost meditate on them. Cycling, it's, I guess in a weird way, kind of similar. Work through ideas in my head and get to explore around the city. I feel that art and cycling, they all kind of tie together for me, especially now that my work involves cycling. One of my clients is a company called Blackburn, and they make products for touring and pumps and water ball cages, kind of accessories for the bike. I do a lot of these little kind of doodles here that get used like all around, sometimes on, on products, sometimes in videos and little places around their website. And this one is a drawing of like things that wreak havoc on your tires. And uh, they make a lot of pumps, so I thought that this was kind of uh, help to tell the story about, you know, what to look out for, things that you'd, you would use your pump for. A lot of times I do just these, these drawings that are part from memory and part from uh, actually being on location and we use these all over from their trade show booths to packaging to kind of all aspects I guess of, of, of uh, their look and feel. My spare time and my work time always kind of mix. think Amanda I thought the video was awesome because he was an artist and who loves to ride around San Francisco as well Wow I mean yes. that that really inspired me too I mean I was amazed at how how beautiful his pictures looked and how he put so much effort on on onto those projects and how he was looking around the bay looking around the city and trying to trying to get some inspiration I, I really touched me a lot and I was surprised that he does this as his daily life. Yeah, that yes. that would have been cool, wouldn't would it? Yes. <laughs> All right, now it's time for the <clears throat> following video. It's called Muralismo y Cultura, aka Murals and Cultures. This video was made by New Voices for Youth in Redwood City. We love this 
documentary about the public arts and murals in San Francisco in the Mission District. Let's check it out, so please look at your screen. The San Francisco Mission District is a lively community that has adopted murals as an art form to express the story of its people, its history, and its rich culture. We are a group of young people that focus on making films about issues in our communities. We are New Voices for Youth. murals and public art found in the San Francisco Mission. We decided to get people's perspectives on murals and what they do for a community. How do murals impact your community? I love the murals. I think they're a really important part of the neighborhood. I think they expose people who um, aren't from here to some of the culture that we embrace here. and. Um, it's just like a really good way of bringing people together in a community visually and like it's a way of like telling stories and showing narratives through art that are important for us to kind of um, stay grounded in our values as a community. So you can say something positive, you can just put something that kids enjoy um, and I think it's, I think it's a really positive thing. I think they make the community a little more pretty, like um, interesting to look at. Um, I think they reflect like the culture of the people that live in the community. Kids are usually the ones that start off painting these murals. Most of the people that, even though it's mostly adults here, except him, he's about 16, but most of the adults that started painting, they started painting when they were kids. So that's how you start learning. But so this is kind of like a youth art form, actually. It's invented by young people. And then if you see like the different colors and the different characters, it's something for young people that's positive to see in their community where they walk through, where they live. So it's just, you can send, you can send out a message. Yes, we are the only organization of muralists in San Francisco. And we're very proud to be celebrating our 38th anniversary. So we have been doing this since 77. Uh, we were founded by Susan, that lady over there, and her late husband, Luis, in 1977. And we specialize in community murals. What that means is that we always try to get the people in the community where the mural is going to be painted involved in the painting of the mural. Uh, they tell us what they want to see in the mural, in terms of content, and we always invite them to help us paint it. Uh, this neighborhood would not be what it is without its murals. Uh, this neighborhood has the highest number of murals in the entire city. There's over 450 murals in this neighborhood alone. And many of them are done by local artists, and in their murals they uh, express their concerns, their hopes, their worries, uh, and, and uh, it's, it's a very uh, simple and effective way of communicating uh, with other residents and increasingly so with visitors. Uh, lots of tourists come here to uh, uh, appreciate the murals. Murals give community strength and that their messages impact the everyday people that walk by. I think murals can give our community that community pride. We have a lot of pride and I think that art in the form of a mural creates that community pride. We can also impact our community by using the murals as a message to the community. Um, the word that's used, and you've probably heard it, propaganda. Propaganda is a tool that you can use to educate and inform people. So murals can be a form of propaganda 
to educate and inform the community on different issues. The year that they created the North Fair Oaks Community Council was pivotal, and that was somewhere in 1989. Uh, that was important because before that time, this community did not have a voice, and there were a lot of changes going on and a lot of things that we needed to do, but they didn't have a voice. We're starting slow. Murals is going to be one of the projects, but right now uh, we're starting with a small project, and that's painting the utility boxes. PG&E and uh, telephone companies have uh, these actual metal boxes. They're like about five feet high. So the first project um, is going to be painting the utility boxes. And then from there going to different sculptures. And uh, the second project is going to be um, having artists in our community volunteer to build these um, 11 foot sculptures that are going to be placed in different areas in the community. That's really exciting, and so you're going to see a lot more artwork being approved uh, through the council because we think that it's very important that our community have art. Murals reflect cultural pride. No matter your background, you're bond to be inspired to take action. decided to take action by creating our own mural in our community of North Oaks. We want our mural to reflect the history and culture of this place. Oh my god, that was awesome. Don't you think, Amanda? It was awesome. Like, wow. So I think we have some information about this program. So do you like to start off? Yes, I would love to start off. New Voices for Youth began as an outreach project in the South Bay to encourage civic engagement among underserved youth about 10 years ago. OK. And New Voices for Youth is now an after-school program in Menlo Ar Arthur High School. 
and Sierra Youth Center. And Redwood City taught by local filmmakers and, and artists. They teach, they teach you how to write, direct, and edit and screen edit and screen movies about important issues in their community. Now it's time for the catchphrase of the week. Yesterday, when I was at my after school program, I found a song, like, this really inspiring catchphrase. It's from a song by 10 years after. The catchphrase of the week is, I'd love to change the world, but I don't know what to do, so I'll leave it up to you. I chose it because of the events in Syria, in the Middle East, and all the stuff that's caused racial tensions in American cities of the, in this past year. I can't stop that, but you guys can. Together we can. Let's watch it. Catchphrase sent a, a real powerful message. So, so I, I I noticed that there has been a lot of conflicts going on in the in, on the other side of the world and even here in the U.S. Yeah. So, I we noticed that um there's a lot of we, we we've heard about Black Lives Matter mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and um and how how it's how it's affecting affecting the community and, and such. Did, yeah. did 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 it really did it really got you there? Did it really get you? Um. Seeing my old city of Baltimore go up in arms, I mean, I didn't like that it happened, but it didn't surprise me at all. It didn't I, surprise you? No, because Baltimore has a type of attitude, and this, and there is a lot of anger towards the police force there. Mm, I see. Okay, and we too can also change the world as well. For those viewers out there, we can um, you can also um, comment on our Facebook page on how you can change the world as well. And send videos to us about how yes. you can change the world. Right. How, how the more you... kid, more young people talk, the more likely changes are to happen. Yes. Yeah. So, um, so if if if, the, if we were if we were able to change the world, um, what 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 positive things that we, that we can do? What positive um, things? Maybe have more trust in our police force. Have more empathy for these people who are basically coming across the borders to seek refuge. I mean, Mm -hmm. my father has worked with these people for almost 20 years, and they either have stories that amaze you or break your heart. Mm, I know. I see. I see. And, um, and I know, I noticed that many people are, are doing these, doing these rallies and, um, and doing these, are sending, sending positive messages and having everyone come together and have, have a good time and such. Yeah, so that would be also be also a good thing to mm-hmm. send a positive message to all over the world, not just here in the U.S. Yeah. And also, if Black Life Matters so much to us, it should means that it should be for everyone else as well, just not just a title. It should be all lives matter. Yeah, and yeah, and, yeah. I know. Yes, I know. Um, I know there's a lot of there's a. I know it. it, it Focuses on black black community, but it should focus on all of the communities. All because we're not the only ones that are yeah. hurting too. Yeah, we're, we're not because the only ones. you have to figure if you work with kids with disabilities and a kid flips out, what if a police officer doesn't know and the kid gets mishandled or and arrested, and someone and, might take it the wrong way? Yeah, yeah, someone might take it the wrong way. So we we can we should. We should stand up and tell them that it is okay. That's, that's how he's acting. Maybe we should help him out, and so that yeah. way he'll he'll feel better and such. Yeah. You get the police. Maybe get the police training on kid, people with disabilities. That is make true. That man, make that mandatory. To all the police officers out there. Please, please, under, please yes. understand that we have disabilities, and sometimes yes. the stuff we can't help. Right. Yes. Yes. We're not getting on you, but. <laughs> yeah. If you're watching the show, please. Yes. Don't come looking for us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was trying to throw in a yeah. joke. Okay. And now it is time for Jokes with Siri, the smart iPhone. Amanda? To Apple Company, we're not trying to promote you guys. We're just using this as a fun activity. So don't please come looking for us. All right. So, Brandon, what what joke do you have for, have for Siri? Okay. Hey Siri, tell a joke. Let me think. 
Nope, can't think of one. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Oh, well, I, it, it, I mean, like, are you it's serious? It's a little bit passive aggressive, are you, you know? Are you, is she trying to be, are you, is she trying to be sassy or something? She yeah. took, like, two minutes just to answer a question. Oh, wow. Now we have another joke hey, by Siri. Siri. Sing me a song. I'd rather leave that to the professionals. <laughs> 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 okay, okay, okay. Seriously? Seriously, she she's gonna leave that to the professionals, and she's not gonna sing for us. Yeah. Wow, that's just wow. Wow, mm-hmm. she's not even Beyonce, so. Yeah. Oh wow, you really had to go there, didn't you, Amanda? Yes. Oh my yes. god. <laughs> I did. Who does she? She thinks she is the Beatles. Uh, the next video here is the life of skateboarding by Erin Garcia of Baycat. Let's check it out. Skateboarding is my job. People get up and go to the office, I get to go out and go skate. The range of freedom I have with skating, like who I can be as a person, I just ultimately have met tons of new friends and tons of new people, and with that, a lot more connections, and it's awesome, it's great. It's really awesome, but then it is hard to like make yourself go skate when you want to skate. And sometimes it'll take like three days to get one trick, you know, so you'll go to a spot three times, three days in a row, just to get one trick or you have to, you'll get kicked out, or you have to wait till the business is closed, so you have to wait till next weekend. There's definitely a stereotype behind skateboarders, but I believe that it's completely different. Personally, I believe that skateboarding is a great way to get the youth out of doing certain bad things, or get the youth from doing certain, certain things that won't, would not be acceptable in today's society. Skaters can skate anything. We're willing to skate whatever they're willing to let us skate. No one comes here except for skaters. Skaters have taken care of spots, and we show appreciation to things like architecture that no one even thinks twice about. Personally, in my experience, skateboarding taught me a lot that school didn't or society didn't. Help me meet new people, help me get out of my comfort zone to really overcome my, my confidence level because trying new tricks takes a lot of confidence, and when you fall, and you, you have the commitment to get back up, it shows that you're dedicated and in the real world that goes a long way. Skateboarding, in my eyes, helped me a lot even when I'm not on my board. I love skating and I need to remember what I skate for and that's for like learning tricks and to get better and to like push myself to do things that I don't think I can do, you know? And it's all part of skating, just, just and then hang out with your friends. Have as much fun as you can. Don't worry about getting sponsored, just try to skate and learn tricks and have fun with your friends. Okay, everyone, I have the honor to introduce to you Erin Garcia on the phone who filmed the next video, Life of a Skateboarding. I was impressed by the quality of this video and the variety of the camera angles. Hello? Hello? Hi. Hey. Um, my name is Amanda Jack. I'm one of the hosts, and... and... And this is Damian Williams, and we're the hosts of Bay Area Youth on Air, a.k.a. Bayo. We're excited to have you here on our show. Awesome. All right, and so we're going to have we're gonna have some questions for you about, about this video that you directed called The Artist Life of Skateboarding, so... So, who is right. featured in this piece, and what are their ages? So the people you see in the video are my friends at the age of like 13, 14, and 15. What motivated you to create a video with such a such a fun and encouraging topic? We made the video because uh, we wanted to show the people of what skateboarding is and what the people... Um, 
what, like a stereotype for like a skateboarder. How long have you been doing skateboarding? I've been skating for like three years. And uh, why do you think skateboarding keeps youth um, out of trouble, high school and, and, and younger? One reason skateboard keeps me out of trouble is I get to do the things that I really wanted to do, like doing tricks that people can't really do. And what keeps me out of trouble is um, fighting drugs or like arguing with other people. Mm, especially with the parents too? Wow. Uh, yes, parents too. Ah, sounds good. Sounds good. What would you tell the youth out there? What would I tell the youth? Yes. What I would tell the youth is to try something new and think of what you want to do in your future. Okay. Yes, it, it, was, it was really nice talking with you. Sorry for the technical difficulties we had. Yeah, it's really fine. I really apologize, too, for all the noise in the background. Yes, and um, and um, and it was really, really nice to have you in our show, and we're looking forward into seeing some of your other videos that you have with, in store. Hopefully, we can have you come back. All right. Wait, is there like a another interview like in the future? Well, um, well, if um, if if you submit submit some of your other videos to our to, to our website or to our um. To our, to our email account, you can. And then if we choose it, then we'll be able to have you join our show once again. All right, cool. All right. Thank you. All right, thank All right, you. Bye. 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 Thank you, hey, there, Bay Area youth. Don't forget to submit your videos and talents to show us so we can feature you on our show at BayOLSTalkTalent at gmail.com. Back to you, Damien. Remember to include title of the piece, a performance and date, name of the artist, school organization and city, short description, length of the piece, and the link to the media work. Thanks for tuning in and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And don't forget to post your picture on our Facebook because you might win a prize. See, See you, you next week, week on, on Channel 76, 76 at Fridays, Fridays and, and Sundays, Sundays at 3.30 p.m. Bye. Bye, guys. And remember, let's talk talent. talent. Woo. Cut. That's her out. All right.